All right, everybody, Amir and I are back on The Great Debaters, and today we're going to look at Nas's first two albums. Everybody thinks Nomadic is the one, but maybe Amir and I have a different opinion. Check us out, y'all. The Great Debaters. All right, Amir, so we're back here on The Great Debaters, and we have decided to examine Nas's first two albums to determine which one is the better Nas album. Illmatic, it was written. So Illmatic, of course, is the debut album, one of the most acclaimed albums in rap history. Came out in 1994, helped bring New York back, as they say. Mm -hmm. So, for you, um, we both are well aware that two songs, two of the pillars of the album, Halftime and It Ain't Hard to Tell, came out prior to the release of Illmatic. So, Nas had obviously had some high profile guest appearances with Main Source and Chub Rock. And then he started coming out with his singles. So for you, coming into Illmatic, you know, were, what were you thinking was kind of the, the image of Nas or what you were thinking of him? Just a master of the flow, great wit in his rhymes, like great wit something that i hadn't seen someone do like that well i know there's like amazing rappers like rock him being one of his main influences especially but just i don't know the way Nas is doing it i thought it was so fresh for just such a young uh mc that was 92 halftime i think so man i loved halftime originally that was my favorite song on the whole album Really? And it, originally, originally. Wow. Ori we'll, we'll get into that. We'll talk. We'll bring that up a little later. Shocking, too. Amir. We'll bring that up a little later. But I thought that song was just freaking amazing, and I love the uh, the Jungle Fever line in there. Okay. Uh, I just thought that was hilarious. But uh, it ain't hard to tell with Large Professor on the beat, dude. It was just like the Michael crazy. Jackson sample. Boom. But speaking of favorites, my favorite song, which is probably my favorite Nas song ever, is New York State of Mind. Yes. That's yes. Probably so, it's me too. If not, yeah. definitely my favorite Nas song. Yeah. Uh, DJ Premier, of course, did that one. And just the sonics, the atmosphere that Premier built, the story, the narrative that Nas told was one of those ones where it was almost tangible. Although that's impossible, obviously, with music, it almost felt like you could smell New York, you could taste New York, you could see New York from what Nas was rapping in a way that is seldom done. So I thought that was phenomenal. And after the intro, to really start the album off like that, I was like, this is amazing. And then to follow it up with Life's a Bitch, I thought was an astounding one-two punch to hit you up with this super hardcore, borderline, menacing, gruff song. And then this wistful song with his dad at the yeah, end with oh, the yeah. horn solo, AZ coming in, not knowing who he was at the time, of course. It was just, the album just started off so potently, and obviously there's only 10 tracks, so there isn't a lot to deal with on Illmatic, which I thought also made it great with The World Is Yours and Represent. Sitting in the Park is just so many amazing beats. One Love, Q-Tip came through with the xylophone gems. Um, sonically and then of course the story and that you know writing getting letters writing letters and stuff so I see a big smile Amir what's going on? I haven't smiled the past two minutes <laughs> okay <laughs> hey New York State of Mind and I feel like on this great debaters show that we've had here in a lot of these videos I've mentioned like just great intros to albums right <laughs> this, this intro I don't know if you can debate this has to be in your top five or top. It has to be in the top ten as far as like track twos and track ones. It ha it, it has to be. Me and Soren will, or at least I will fight you. I don't know. About <laughs> it's amazing, and apparently he did it in one take. Is that a myth? Is that true? I've heard it's true from a couple interviews and whatnot. That I don't. But know. I can't speak, bro. Because when he said, "I don't know how to start this, y'all," and he just goes on and monkey flip them and all that stuff it right. was like phenomenal but is i don't want to stick on this one song um memory lane man it's right. like another one and as i was saying at first this is the reason why i think this album is like so great and we'll talk about both these albums the reason i think this album is like so crazy is because 
I've had five different favorite songs. Okay. First was Halftime, then it was Memory Lane, then it was World Is Yours, and then it was uh, actually four. And then lastly, it was New York State of Mind. It's been like that for probably like five, six, seven years now. As it should be. <laughs> Although it should have just been the first time you heard it like, okay. I agree. It was okay. Amazing. It's Dude. over. But obviously this album is super regarded as a masterpiece, and rightly so, for being brilliant. And yeah. without much further ado, let's just move on to It Was Written. The Boom. second album, which sold way more because of at least on the official album, not the international version of How Rule the World, Imagine That, with Lauryn Hill, with a big nod to Houdini and Curtis Blow on the yes. lyrical and sonic side. So that obviously broke the album Two. and was a huge song and still is a big song, uh, you know, whether you're at clubs, sometimes on the radio, out and about and stuff, it's huge. And it really, I know I remember at the time it threw people off because people were saying Nas was like selling out or Nas was trying to go commercial or what have you, but I also remember thinking, why would they say that? Because He's got Lauryn Hill singing, and because the beat's a little more melodic, I didn't have yeah. any problems with it. No, me neither. It was genius, and Lauryn Hill, especially with that the score album doing so well in the U.S. and internationally, perfectly explains why it's his best-selling album to this day. Yeah, and then of course they had Street Dreams, which had a great video with the casino uh, play off of that. Mm -hmm. I thought it was great, and uh, gave you power. Another phenomenal song, DJ um, Premier. For those that watch the entire channel, you know we have a uh, best albums where Nice and Smooth talk about Machiavelli, and they talk about me and my girlfriend, and you know people are like, oh, Tupac did Nas, and one thing I always like to point out in that is it's hard to say because back then the albums were made and then they took months and months to come out. It's not like now where an album can be done on Thursday and come out on Tuesday. Like it doesn't work like that, or it didn't work like that back then. And beyond that, Nas and, and Tupac weren't exactly friends. So they wouldn't have been probably listening to each other's music like that. And then also obviously Tupac passed away um, before the Machiavelli album came out. So it's all kinds of stuff that Nas probably did at first, maybe did at first, but regardless, those songs are like close together yeah, oh, um, yeah. As far as things. So for you, outside of those tracks, what stood out to you about it, it was written? The Message. Okay. The Message is one of my favorite songs, and it sparked controversy, as, as we know. With uh, Maybe those who don't know, just look it up. And with Kick in the Door and The Message, with the Biggie and Nas Wars, etc. You know? But uh, I just thought The Message was just amazing way to, to start off the album after the intro. Not quite like New York State of Mind, obviously, <laughs> right. but it's a very stellar intro, and Street Dreams, you mentioned, I gave you power. One thing I want to kind of, we've been talking about so much happiness and, and how we've been so happy about uh, all the songs that we mentioned so far, I do want to kind of mention one part of this album that I didn't like, or right. I should say was disappointed in. Uh, and I believe if this was in 1996, I would have been like, like this, okay. like so happy for it, but you know the you know was coming. The, the Dr. Dre uh, produced Nas is coming with the very suspect chorus um, and the nasty. I just thought it was so funny, you know, nasty Nas is coming in and and all this. I wasn't huge on the female chorus. Shocker! Um, <laughs> Shocker! I wasn't huge on the chorus, and I just didn't think the blend was all that well with, with Dre and Nas, and I was just a little disappointed. My favorite producer, one of my favorite MCs collabing in something that I thought was one of the lesser favorites for me on the album. On the flip I don't side know of that, think about that song. Well, on the flip side, though, we, uh, we haven't mentioned Black Girl Lost, which I thought was a, another great track that showed Nas expanding kind of his worldview as an artist and what he talked about because Illmatic was very much about him and his experiences or things he saw as people famously tried to attack him for later but regardless Black Girl Lost showed him going a little bit beyond himself to look at you know different things going on in the world good song. and what makes it good to you the insightfulness 
And as you said, people attacked him for it. Uh, is he going to put on this mask or this mask? I thought Black or Loss was sincere. And I actually really liked the singing on that chorus, too. That was as opposed to the Nas coming. But um, this was just an album packed with even the features, as he had boasted that uh, Illmatic had only one appearance who wasn't very well known. Um, I love the Mob Deep features on here, that Prodigy verse on Live Brother Rap. I just thought it was just like so freaking good over that. Amazing. especially amazing even havoc on the setup i liked it lauren hill we've covered that uh we were introduced to foxy brown a little yep. bit here which is also probably my second other song that i'm not huge on but i do like how foxy was making an appearance in an affirmative action man i love that one yeah so both albums obviously are chock full of great songs it's amazing so now amir we have to come down to what the debate is so for you which of the first two Nas albums is the better album and why? Illmatic. For me, personally, I love his flow especially. I love his flow, his, his confidence being such a young guy, his witty wordplay. The production, I think, is great on both albums. I do prefer it on the first. Uh, especially with the kind of all-star team up we had here. Not to say the second album didn't have it, because it had some great producers on there as yes. well. Um, but I'm going with the first. There's no songs I would take off. Granted, it has the advantage of only ten tracks, nine full bloated songs. Um, I'm going number. I'm going with 94 debut. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Illmatic also for many of the same reasons. Primarily because I think that it was written has a couple tracks. Primarily the ones you mentioned that you weren't very fond of, I'm not either. That being said, it's obviously a phenomenal album yeah. and shows tremendous growth and the ability to have these amazing conceptual songs that we didn't see to the degree with Illmatic. I think songwriting-wise, it was written as better, but I think as a complete package, Illmatic is better. Yes. So, for that reason, Amir and I are both riding with Illmatic. But that's us, y'all. Make sure you guys let us know. Please subscribe, share, like, comment. Let us know what y'all think down here in the comment section on The Great Debaters. I'm Soren Baker. Amir Amy. Check it out, y'all.